Hello everyone, my name is Miranda Fox and I am currently a graduate student getting my master's in curriculum and teaching. I have been lucky enough to learn about lesson study in the past year um, by traveling to Thailand, the Netherlands, and learning about it in a few different places in the United States, but I've also read a lot of literature on lesson study, so I've learned, you know, the many different ways it's conducted in different areas. And one of the many things that I've learned is that while the main facets of lesson study remain fairly constant, each country, district, school, or whatever it may be, adapts lesson study to fit their context and what really works best for them. And so today we're going to be talking about Pete Dudley's model. And Pete Dudley is a leader of education in the UK. He was the president of the World Association of Lesson Study, and he was the one that introduced lesson study to the UK in 2001, and since then he has been developing it, researching it, and conducting lesson studies in the UK and um, elsewhere. And so in 2011, Pete Dudley published Lesson Study, a Handbook, which is where I've gathered all the information on his model that we are going to be looking at today. So he recommends when getting started to follow these guidelines. The first is that he recommends ideally you have a group size of three. So this is enough people so that you have enough eyes on the room when observing the lesson, but it's also not too many voices so we don't get overwhelmed with too many ideas trying to come together. Um, he also recommends that the teachers are interested in the challenge of learning this new PD approach. Oftentimes, um, it is found that when you're enforcing teachers to do lesson study, you're making them when it's not really something that they are interested in or want to do, they're not going to reap the full benefits of it because they don't really open themselves up to it um, and to the idea of learning from it. And he also recommends that at least one, what he calls, member of the senior team is part of this group and that there's mixed experience levels among teachers. So this is a diagram that he has in his handbook which is kind of outliner generalizing his model and what it looks like but this is a little bit complicated um, so we're going to actually break it down step by step. All right so starting off he recommends that teachers have an initial meeting and in this meeting, you're going to set out your expectations and your ground rules um, and make sure that the teachers know they can take risks without being judged and that everyone is of equal status as professionals. So regardless of the different levels of experience, you're all coming together to learn and grow together so you are all equals in this process. And during this meeting, you also want to determine your goal, um, what the problem is that you want to address, or what exactly it is that you want to improve. Then looking at the first lesson study cycle, it follows a similar flow as what you learned um, through Katherine Lewis's lesson study step by step. Um, you're going to start with the joint planning of the free first research lesson then teach and observe the first research lesson. Now this next part is what is something kind of new to Pete Dudley's model that we don't see in Katherine Lewis's, and that is interviewing pupils. And then after that, you'll have the post-lesson discussion, and you're going to start planning for a second cycle of lesson study. So when looking at planning the lesson, I'm not going to go over the kind of general steps that you already know go into planning the lesson. We're going to focus on the things that really set Pete Dudley's model apart from what you already know. So here you're going to determine which class you will conduct the lesson in. And from that class, you're going to identify three case pupils that represent three different groups of learners. And so one example that Dudley outlined was that you could look at pupils who are making good, average, or below average progress. And this is just one example. You can pick any three groups that align with your goal or what you're trying to study. Then you want to identify what you want each case pupil and their corresponding group to be able to do by the end of the lesson. 
So if you look at this picture on the right here, it shows um, a little form that they use where they outline who the case pupil is and those success criterion or what they should be able to do by the end of the lesson. Then you want to decide which case pupil each observer will focus on because you want to make sure that um, that you get information on all the case pupils and that you don't miss anything because observers are focusing on the same student by mistake. Then looking at teaching the first research lesson, the observers want to focus first on those case pupils and then zoom out to get a larger group or whole class view. Because we know that the case pupils won't tell us every single thing we need to know about every student. Then you want to consider how the case pupils' responses compare to what your anticipated responses for them were, and if there are patterns among the case pupils or differences, similarities that you notice, things of that type. Then you also want to consider what you might want to ask these case pupils in a post-lesson interview. This document here is used both in the planning and the observation. So you'll notice that there are columns where you anticipate student responses. You're going to outline the approximate time for each phase of the actual lesson. And then there's also the columns for what you observe. So this makes it really nice and easy to compare what did you anticipate was going to happen and what actually happened. Then when we look at interviewing the pupils, these should be short interviews, no more than five minutes. They can be conducted in a group or individually, but they should be conducted as soon as possible. Ideally, you would conduct them immediately following the lesson. And when possible, you want to capture the exact words of the students to make sure you're really conveying the meaning that they're trying to express to you. And sometimes you can also include pupils that are in the same learner groups that you identified as the case pupils. Um, and this will help triangulate the findings, but you also have to be careful because it can complicate your data set. And then over here on the right, you'll see some suggested questions that Dudley has outlined for these post-lesson interviews. And what you're really trying to get at is just more information about how the students learned. Um, because we know that the focus of lesson study is on student learning and how we can better help students learn, that's what you're trying to pull out from these students is how did they learn and how could you better support their learning. Then we move on to the post-lesson discussion. And so again, this follows, you know, the similar pattern of what we've seen um, in other readings about what happens in the post-lesson discussion, but here I'm just going to outline the qualities of a successful post-lesson discussion as according to Dudley. So the first is this openness to critical viewpoints and suggestions. So we know that in the post-lesson discussion we are going to be giving um, constructive feedback on the lesson and what happened. So the teachers need to be open to hearing this constructive feedback. Then we need fidelity to observe data and no excusing failure. So you have to make sure that you're using the observation data to support what you are claiming you learned and the findings that you get from your lesson study. Viewing the discussion as a joint learning opportunity. So everyone participating in this process is trying to learn and grow and develop to better help students. You should also have clear goals and questions from the planner observation sheet. And so this is just going to help you focus your post lesson discussion. Then, as we have also seen before, he suggests a designated moderator for the discussion. And again, this helps keep it focused. And this can be combined with the role that they suggest of having an advisor, which is essentially just a final commentator who is going to capture the learning distilled from the discussion so that the group and others beyond the group can learn and act upon um, the conclusions made. And this can also be a knowledgeable other, someone external to the school, as suggested by Takahashi, who is another um, lesson study researcher. And so then down at the bottom, Dali created this model to show kind of the flow of the post-lesson discussion. So you always want to start with your observations of case students in lesson study. So what did you observe about their learning and their understanding? 
and then move on to questions and discussions about the way other students learn. So move beyond just these case pupils. What else did these students learn that might have been different from the case pupils? And then finally, general questions and discussion about the data on the teaching. This is a record that Dudley suggests using, which again helps organize your thoughts um, when conducting this post-lesson discussion and helps you put your thoughts together in a nice way. Then another aspect of Dudley's model that makes it kind of unique is that he really expects you to have a second and third lesson study cycle. While Catherine Lewis suggests having more cycles and talks about the benefits of it. Here, Dudley's really saying we need a second and third lesson study cycle. So for his model, those are crucial. And so looking at the top for the second cycle, moving from right to left, we again have the planning of the lesson, teach and observe, we're going to interview pupils again, and then conduct the post-lesson discussion, and then start planning for the third cycle. Then from left to right there, we have, again, the planning of the lesson, teach and observe, interview the pupils, and then have the post-lesson discussion. And then during that time, because you've now completed your final cycle, unless you're going to continue on and do more, which is also okay, you're going to agree on your overall findings and really synthesize what you learned through the process. So talking about then that final step that I just mentioned of synthesizing that information, it's important that the teachers write up and or present what they have discovered through the lesson study because this is what allows lesson study to expand and to make the, make the learning beyond just the small group that conducted it. Um, so to help do this, arranging an opportunity ahead of the lesson study is helpful um, so that the group has an opportunity to share with colleagues. It is also nice to arrange opportunities for participants to coach their colleagues on the pedagogic technique they adapted or refined through the process. So really taking what they learned and helping the other teachers come to learn it as well. And then it's also a good idea to find ways to display snippets of the lesson study throughout your school to continue the conversations among teachers. And this can be through pictures of the process, quotes from teachers from the discussions they had, from the student interviews, or anything else you feel like you can display from the lesson study to really get other teachers talking about what you did. If you want to learn more about lesson study and how it is done in the UK, you can feel free to go to this website. You can also download Pete Dudley's handbook here if you want to look a little more into that. So thank you so much, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your instructor.